All right, in today's video, we are gonna unpack all of the features of the Neptune 3 Max from Elegoo, and hopefully I will be able to provide all the information you need to know in order to make the decision if the $470 price point is worth it. So here we go. The packaging of a 3D printer is poor. Usually it's packaged really well with foam. Obviously they have to disassemble parts of the printer for it to fix inside a box. And I think they did, once again, an excellent job with the packaging. It all felt very secure. So here's some footage of me assembling this. So this is everything you get inside the box. A filament sensor, filament screws, power cable, tools. Here's just another tool filament holder, USB cable, spatula, spare nozzles, and SD card plus reader. Here's a glue stick for when you're not using the heated bed, it can be really useful to have the print stick onto the bed. The touch screen holder and instructions. I satisfyingly removed the protection on the screen, installed the filament holder, filament sensor, and then screwed on the reinforcement rods. Once I started digging out all the parts from the box, I noticed how massive the bed on this printer is. It's 420 by 420 millimeter footprint. And don't forget, that means you have a diagonal of almost 600 millimeters. And so here's a good example. I made a Nintendo sign that I put a 45 degree angle on in the set axis. So it printed diagonally. And that way you can make it larger, even larger than just 420 millimeters. But it also has a 500 millimeter set axis, which is massive. Regarding the assembly of this, there aren't a whole lot of things to do. You put up the set axis gantry and connect it with two screws on the bottom, and then you put up these reinforcement rods and connect the touch screen. That really is it. Now, a quick mention on the touch screen. It's a minor thing. I like that they made it detachable so you can, you know, mount it somewhere if you like. Uh, but now as it stands on the holder, it can wiggle when you when you touch it sometimes. I wish they made a little more of a solid holder for the touch screen. That's it. Uh, oh yeah, the filament holder up top. It's just two screws. Easy. So now I flipped the switch on and gave it power. And I was surprised to see that they have an integrated LED strip on top, which I think is great because if you want to take a peek inside the room to make sure the print is doing okay, you don't have to turn the lights on. You can just visibly see the print all the time. I know it's a minor thing, but you know, thumbs up. But the first thing you have to do after powering it all up is to level the bed because it's so massive. It can be hard to get that first layer completely flat. And so there is an induction sensor inside the hot end to level the bed and make sure that you can get that first perfect layer. Now here's when I stumbled across my first issue. It went home fine in the X and Y axis, but it wouldn't go down in the set axis to level the bed. It just stayed there. It went up slightly and then it would just stay there. It couldn't go down for some reason. After troubleshooting this for a couple of hours, I went on Facebook and wrote on the Elegoo Facebook group and no one had a clear answer why. So I texted Elegoo directly to their customer service and they texted me back almost instantly explaining that, hey, maybe you should take this shield or, or bracket off, whatever this is called, to make sure that the sensor cables haven't been compromised, severed or, or squeezed or whatever it might be. And so I did. And it turned out that the sensor cables had been so squeezed together that they had short circuit. So I simply separated them, pushed them to the side, assembled everything on here, and it was completely fine. It was just a simple mistake from the factory. They wrote me back saying that, hey, we're gonna make sure this doesn't happen again. That's what happened to me, and I'm just sharing it in this video. And now the leveling went just perfectly fine. And I do like the fact that they still have these thumb screws, so you can do slight adjustments to the height of the bed. Sometimes some printers, have a leveling sensor, but they don't have these adjustable knobs so you can adjust the bed yourself. And I don't like that. I like having these thumb screws, so that's a thumbs up again.
for the very first print, it should be something small, something easy for the printer. It's just common courtesy. I smacked on a 48 hour highly detailed building and it printed flawlessly. It's just solidly printed. There's no weird C banding, no blobs, no weird artifacts. It's just perfect. It did take 48 hours, but that's mainly because I guessed almost all the settings in the slicer software. Now you could print it in half the time and get as good quality, no issues. So that's when I jumped to this massive print. It was mainly for the thumbnail, to be honest, but it is watertight and it's just one parameter thick. It's super thin, weighs absolutely nothing. To get these things watertight in vase mode can be a little tricky, but this printer managed just fine. So I'm really happy with this too. I then jumped over to this drone frame and it's flexible. I printed TPU because this has a direct drive extruder and not a Bowden extruder. A Bowden extruder is when you have the motor that pushes the filament onto the side and it pushes through a tube that then goes into the hot end. On this setup, we have the motor integrated in here. It makes this gantry a little heavier and that's the downside to it. Direct drive extruders are superior in my opinion but this works really well for TPU and that's why I tested it. It's a flexible filament and it just makes it easier when you have a direct drive extruder to print TPU because the, the distance is shorter. If you have a Bowden extruder, sometimes the TPU can, can roll up and, and cause a jam that's, um, that's really unfortunate when you print. But this managed really well and it was printed in just an hour, so that's really cool. The 3D Benchy I printed at 200% scale and it was mainly to test the filament runout feature. It's a feature that allows you to have the filament run out and it will automatically stop and then continue printing once you have reloaded the filament. And so I tested with orange PLA in the beginning and then I cut the PLA and it stopped and I then swapped out to red PLA and continued the print and it worked really really well. Here's what's shown on the main screen, and it's also detachable, so you can take it off and move it around if you wish. But you can tell that it wobbles, like I talked about before. But on the main screen, you can access all the files by clicking print. And on prepare, you have the movement of all the axes. You can move the bed, for example. And under temperature, you can heat up the nozzle. So let's just do 200 degrees, and it will start to heat up. You can also have the filament controlled here by reloading. Now the fan kicked in, but if we go back to settings, you can tell by just the text what all these do, but under advanced settings, you can actually change things like motor settings and speed settings, acceleration and maximum speed. That's really good. I like that a lot, but you can also turn on and off the light and the fan, the filament detector you can even turn off, which is really good. And under level, you just go into the leveling mode and it's gonna home and then you get all the uh, all the uh, measurements onto the screen. Okay, so now here you have all the measurements from the previous leveling that I did. And here you can do it manually or just let it level itself. So let's talk about how it stands against other 3D printers on the market. I think it should be compared to the Creality CR10 Max. It's almost double the price and even on the CR10 Max, you're not getting this nice of a build plate. and. Now when I think about it, I haven't even talked about the PEI sheet, which is this metal spring steel metal bed that it's flexible. So once you have printed something, you can just flex the bed and it pops off. It's really, really good. And the CR10 Max doesn't have that. And on other things like the structure and the interface, I think it's, it's just as good as the CR10 Max, but half the price. Obviously, I haven't tested this printer for very long, so I'll keep you updated on it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.